All right, guys, our next guest is coming off a fight against Felice Herrig at UFC Fight Night Oklahoma. And while the fight didn't go her way, she won a lot of people's respect for not only putting up a good fight against one of the best strawweights in the world, but also the way she handled a tough situation. She is Justine Kish. Justine, welcome to Submission Radio. How's it going today? Hello, it's going great. I'm excited to talk to you guys. I love your accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Yeah, let's get into it. Thanks for having me on here. It's uh, it's actually a real pleasure to be talking to you guys. Well, we imagine things have been pretty crazy for you recently. Tell us, what's the last week been like for you since the fight against Felice went sort of viral and all over the world? Oh, my God. Uh, well, geez, well, I definitely hit extremities for sure. As far as like my feelings post fight, my feelings I mean, during like during fight week, from post fight to mm. uh, during the fight. I mean, we're we're just talking about like a plethora of feelings and just like all, all over the place. So I'm now like it's a it's actually exactly a week now. So I feel like things are you know finally getting back to order and things like that. And um, okay, so fight week, I felt incredible. Like you know, as a had a schedule, well, uh, I would say I had a schedule, like, in terms of, like, what I need, where I need to be for, like, my weight, and um, I, had an, I had a fantastic camp, so, like, I was totally all very positive, very excited to be there, and uh, appreciative, like, of all the help that I've gotten there, and all I had to do, I felt like, was just uh, just perform at that, like, there, were, there was very, very little anxiety, if anything, the anxiety were... We, the only the only time there was anxiety were was when there were like three more pounds to go with the weight cut. So uh, that um, that's what's a little bit frustrating about everything because it just seemed like all the you know all the stars were aligned. Everything was going so well. I had a great I had a fantastic camp, fantastic fight week. Um, and then comes I mean I don't know how 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 much details you guys want for fight week and then talking about the fight and then post fight <laughs> i guess i guess i guess we're curious how are you feeling about it now because i i think going into the fight people thought all right you know f you know justin kish versus felice herrig you know it's going to be a great fight and i think afterwards it obviously went viral for in a lot of ways the wrong reasons and it sort of like turned things upside down for you so we're curious how are you feeling about it now a, we a week removed now that you know the dust has kind of settled Okay, how I'm feeling right now, I feel so much better because uh, the po uh, right after the post fight, I was I just felt really humiliated and embarrassed, and not just because of my performance of just set we we'll talk about it in a little bit, but um, it's incredible how much support I have right now. Actually, like the, it's I don't know if it's because the pe the people I purposely surround myself with, um, they always you know it's. The people that are around me are very successful. They're very positive, and that's in my family. That's in my team. And uh, I was a little bit, I was apprehensive to like how things were going to happen when I got home because I haven't lost in a long time, and so these feelings are new to me. And so embracing them is like has been has been different actually. But it's incredible. Like I thought people would be a lot more disappointed in me, and I mean I know I was disappointed like because I I have that I have that that rate that that um i have the feelings of how i am at my best performances i've had around 30 fights now maybe like five or six in mma for professional uh the rest is all muay thai and so i've been put like i've been pushed by like you know i've i've, I've been tested to like the to the to extremes like in muay thai fights and i love brawls i love getting i love getting after it in there and things are coming back to me piece by piece of what happened in the fight and it's just frustrating to, for me to think like man how excited i am to be in there to compete and to fight and to like have a brawl with someone to like to go back to go back and jab and punch and you know to actually have like a uh, to showcase like skills that i've like really really worked hard to instill and to develop and and then i don't know what was going on in my mind i really thought felice for whatever reason she'd want to strike back and there's a couple of times i got her some combinations and i saw her buckle and i was like okay i'll step back and let her start throw some punches at me and no all she want to do is just take me down put me on my back and hold me there and and, and unfortunately that's like that's that's winning like that's a winning a fight and that's in my eyes it's not fighting that's killing time and letting the clock run down and 
it's it's really the, the rules are frustrating to me and the, I realize now I could have stopped sometimes because I was very active on the ground because she knows a lot more ground than I do. That's okay. I don't mind that she does. She put so much time into it. I'm still trying to put equal time into my ground that, that I have like into my striking and that it's I put so much I've lived in Thailand so I put so much time into striking but I moved back to the USA just so I could wrestle and do jiu-jitsu so I could put equal time and I I absolutely love it I mean I don't get me wrong but I wasn't going to try to do all these different things I probably should have done against the elites because I just felt like she she was a step ahead of me and all that stuff so the things that were that I had drilled and, and tried drilled and instilled those things, I felt like, okay, this is I'm not doing a good job with this. The only time I'm going to get the space I want is I have to wait for her to start hitting me. And she got me, you know, a good a few good times. But um, my feelings right now are just like, wow, how frustrating it was. I had a training day today. I did jiu-jitsu and some wrestling. I'm just, uh, I'm just like, why didn't I do all these things? And I, I want to blame the surface area. I want to blame, oh, okay, I didn't have a great warm up. There's so many different things to blame, but I think right now I just have to say, man, I just, I sucked in that fight. Like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. So right now, like the feelings are frustrated, but I'm just overwhelmed and so excited, like how positive everyone's been. Yeah, there's like some cynical comments here and there, and then there's like, but those mean nothing. They're from strangers, and it takes. It takes someone really special to me, someone really influential to like for me, for their words to phase me. It really does. Like I've heard, I've been called every name in the book in Thailand. I'm pretty sure I haven't heard all of them either, but <laughs> it takes a lot to phase me. But um, I was mostly embarrassed post fight. Like I was like, man, you know, I'm going to probably embarrass, like this is probably going to embarrass my family. Like the kids that I trained, the kids that I, 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 cause I my, my side job is I coach, you know, my, uh, striking coach or a kickboxing coach, whatever you want to call it. And I work with amazing, you know, amazing kids. And I just, man, I felt like I let them down, but they, so far they've let me believe that no, you didn't let us down at all. So it's just incredible the support I have right now. But I would say today, especially after the training, like I feel really frustrated that I didn't do a whole, I do a whole lot of things that I should have done. But, um, I don't know. I, I finally watched the fight and I watched it. And I'm like, man, she's just holding me down. Like, how how is that fighting? Like, I, when I'm in there, I want to fight. I want to punch. I want to kick. I, I want, you know. Anyways, maybe you guys can tell me otherwise. <laughs> no, I, I think honestly, you, you being a little bit hard on yourself. Uh, you know, you went up against a veteran, someone who's been in the sport for a very long time, and you know, in, in one of your earlier fights, you still held your own. I think people were impressed by your physical strength and the way you were able to hold your own. Um, and I, I think you might be beating yourself up a little bit too much. I'm, I'm curious, what do you sort of, in terms of regrets, what are you being hard on yourself over more? The, the, the way the fight played out or the incident that happened at the end? They are, I could probably, I could draw parallels to like both of them. But like the fact that, uh, well, my performance wasn't up to par. I was, I just, it, it's, it, it's gutting to me that when I go in there and I want to display these things and I can't really do it to get into some, against someone that just wants to hold me down and just let the, let the clock run down. It feels like I'm, you know, the fans aren't getting really to see the best of me. And I've got to, fi- I mean, I just have to figure out how to keep it at, uh, keep it at um, not be lazy when people take me down. Like sometimes I don't care. Like if girls take me down, and I need to really start being competitive about it because, I mean, heck, it's a thrill to me. It's exciting when girls take me down. Like, oh, she got me down. Good takedown. Now I got to work. Now I got to do things. But so it's it's nothing like is a threat to me in there. Even that that when she was choked. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss. When she was oh, choking, you, you, like you can say whatever you want in Australia. When she was choking the shit out of me, like I was like, <laughs> oh man, she's got this good. But I was like, okay, just pay attention to what she's. And I could feel like she was giving up a little bit because, you know, I let go to my own experience. Like I let go of my own experiences. Like okay, just focus on the things that she's doing right now because, like, I could feel her shoulders like giving up a little bit, giving up. I was like, there's still space here. I could feel her, give uh, being. Uh, less confident about it. So uh, finally, there was, you know, with the point like, oh man, she should be done. That's kind of when she just like gave up a little bit. I was like, ah, oh, now there's a spot to go ahead and get to my back. And then maybe, anyways, my t- me utilizing time was horrible because she compl- she she was way smarter on um, utilizing the clock than I was. Because right whenever things went my way, it was like, Bing! or did you- wait, what's the sound of things? Uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the sound, whatever the sound it makes, I was like, oh shoot, I ran out of time, and 
I, I know my the coaches and stuff are telling me, but I'm just so in the moment, and I, I love being in there, and I just I'm disappointed that I didn't get to like really fight. Like I want to, I want someone to hit me back and strike me back, and I want, you know, I want that experience. Me getting hold. I mean, and my coach is like every fight is going to be like this in UFC because no one's going to want to sit stay toe toe with you. And I'm like, no, there's plenty of girls that will do it. As I'm arguing with him, saying there are plenty of girls that will stay in front of me, but um, we'll see. We'll see who's right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think one of the things is I know you mentioned that you're uh, disappointed with your performance, but like you mentioned okay. before, just yeah. getting out of those getting out of those chokes. I mean, a lot of people thought Felice was going to finish you with a lot of the, those submissions, and how you were able to get out of them was absolutely mind blowing to a lot of fans who you know really didn't haven't really seen that many people escape such tight chokes before. So I think a lot of respect was earned by the performance. I know I know Casper uh, mentioned it before, so we just want to touch on it briefly, but. You know, the, the, when the incident, actual incident went down that we all saw as well, I know you, you're fighting off the chokes, you you were defending everything, but talk to us a little bit about that moment when you realized the incident went Man, down in the fight. I and... start sweating. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah, so my, my sister-in-law is a, my sister-in-law, Inga, she's a emergency room doctor, I come from a family of doctors, and they're, you know, they say it's no big deal, you know, they see all sorts of things in the emergency room, blah, 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 but she says, when, you know, I've never been tapped out or choked out like that in a fight. I'll, I'll tap a hundred billion times in training, but I'll be the first one to tap just so I don't get hurt or things like that. But in, in mm -hmm. competition, I'm like, no, like they have to go take me all the way out because I'm not going to give up for all the work that I did. I'm not going to give up in front of my coaches. It's just, I have that sense of pride that I am not going to give up because I've worked so endlessly, like put all of my time and heart into it. Like, why would I just go ahead and say, okay, no, they can, someone can absolutely finish me. And then they can have the, 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 you know, prestige of like, you know, saying they, they finished me, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, she has the rounds, but she's not, I'm not going to let her finish me. So what had happened was she took so much that your, your body gives up. And so like, that's what my body did. So like my body just like gave up, whether it was, mm -hmm. you know, give, I, mentally, physically, mentally doesn't matter. Physically, whenever you're, um, when you're like suffocated like that, like <laughs> poop just comes out, I guess. I mean, I swear <laughs> I went to the bathroom like 20 or 30 times. Like, I mean, I'll pee a hundred times and my stomach was turning a little bit during the fight. I mean, before the fight, but I minimized it to, oh, that's just pre-fight, you know, anxiety or nerves. It's all part of the process. I'm not going to dwell on anything right before a fight because I'm focused on the wrong things. So whether my stomach was, I don't know. I, in my mind, I felt great. I was ready to go out there. But yeah, she was choking me, choking me. But I still felt like, okay, I can, I have it. I have it. I have it. Well, something else was going when I was saying I have it. I have it. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I don't, I didn't feel anything. I know that sounds gross, but um, I looked around and the clock was over. I mean, the fight was over. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that just that it went by so fast. And I smell something. I'm like. That's a referee or something that Felice like <laughs> oh, and but I was like you know trying to be keep my composure about it. and I looked it was all around me and then I started to get up I was like oh my god oh my god it's me it's me so I look at my team and I'm like and then so right there they're both trying to shuffle like getting our um our corners both corners are like shuffling trying to get each other ready for the announcement to to raise Felice's hand and I look at my corner I'm like that's my shit on the floor <laughs> like I'm just. <laughs> And then they're like, no, it's okay. Just so shh. Like, I was like, God, oh my. So I look at her and I'm like, and I just, and I, I, I want to leave. I want to get out and clean myself up. I, or I want to, I'm like, I got to take these off. I got to take, but I'm realized, oh my God, this is all high definition cameras. As everyone's looking at me. I can't just get naked and just like clean myself right here. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't just go in a corner. There's no secret corner anywhere. <laughs> so I was just, I, I was like, okay. So I was like, I have, there's time. <laughs> there, there's time for me to stand and for them to raise Felice's hand and for me to shake it, say good luck, and then I had, then I had, have to leave. Like, and I was like, but if I had just left, that would have been so, so bad. It would have been so rude. It would have taken away from Felice's win, and I didn't want to do that. So I did all I could. Just, but there was a, there's just a lot of stuff in my pants, and I'm just like standing there. I, was just, I mean, I swear when they were announcing, when they were like. 
and by. The word unanimous lasted forever. He made it into 10 syllables. I swear. He was like, and the unanimous. Like, he made that the word unanimous like last forever. And I just really wanted to raise her hand for her, shake her hand, and go. Oh. But I couldn't. So I just stood there. They raised their hand, and I go. But then I'm just thinking, wow. UFC is never, first of all, I just crapped on their mats. They're never going to want me back ever. <laughs> I didn't know whether that should start cleaning it up and or leave it to someone else. I felt like I was, I was just, all these feelings, I was just perplexed by like, okay, do I start cleaning it up? And my, I mean, my corner was like, no, just, just get out. Let's leave. Just get out. And, but I was just perplexed by just thinking, what, how do I handle this? Like, how do I need to clean it up? I don't want to be responsible for this mess I just left. And I still feel bad. Like, I feel like I should go over, back over to Oklahoma City and say, like, hey, can I do something about this? But no. <laughs> i help you guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, you, you mentioned, um, hey, things were a little bit awkward. What was it like backstage when you went, went backstage? Did you speak to one in the UFC? And what, what did they say to you? Um, I want, no one said anything to me. It was just mm -hmm. like, I was the one trying to like bring the subject up and they're just like, everyone's just like, you know, it was like a, like taboo or something like, <laughs> but like, I was like, I, I've got to go. There's, you know, because the, protocol, pro, uh, post fight protocol, you have to go see a medic. And before and you go see a medic, then they let you know, just make sure you're healthy, things like that to announce any things, any things that any concerns, or anything like any post fight injuries, blah blah blah. So uh, I was like, no, I'm I'm fine. Please, I I need to go, you know, to the restroom. Please, like, well, all right, well, let's check this. We get, we should maybe put a stitch here. We should. I was like, I have to leave right now. Like, well, we need to take. Like, I don't want money right now. I just really want to clean myself up, please. And uh, like, I, and they're like, okay, all right. So my team stayed there, but they weren't they weren't, they weren't very happy with me leaving. But I didn't. I had, you know, I had like. I had, a, I had like a sense of pride, like, you know, I've got to clean myself up, then I can think about everything else, okay? So that was, it was a little bit difficult to kind of bypass the medic team, but I promised them I was going to be straight back, and uh, because you're really not supposed to leave that room until, um, until, uh, until, until they pass you, or until they sign you out. Mm -hmm. uh, but they let me go, and then I was running down the hallways, and Reebok's trying to give me clothes, they're trying to say, here, put this, here, put this, you want that? I'm like, no. <laughs> I just wanted to go to the bathroom <laughs> just to clean myself, you know, and just, um, but I, I'm laughing about this now, but I swear, like, I, I was just, I'm, I'm, I was, it's completely, it's a, it's contrast to, like, to, to my feelings at the moment. That hallway was 10 miles long. The medic, everyone just, I just felt eyes burning on me, and I was just like, man, I'm going to be ridiculed, and then, uh, I was just, I knew, I was, you know, worried about who I was going to come across in the corners. Like, I was being like, I thought they're like, uh, excuse me, Justine, we have, you know, the problem that you have. I was just, you know, imagining all these horrible, like, but no one did. All, they're just imagining the absolute worst, and I'm just glad I didn't come to life. But, um, I don't know. I mean, what, what the heck were you guys thinking when you heard about it? You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's definitely something that you don't always see, but I mean, a, a ton of respect to you and obviously Felice to, you know, the way you guys handled it. I mean, even the way you're speaking about it, like in, in a situation like that, you were very selfless in that the first thing you were thinking about is like, you know, Felice and, and, and things like that. I mean, it's, it's one of those things and I think you handled it very well and sort of very professionally, you know, you went on Twitter and sort of, you know, made fun about the situation, but it seems like, you know, th there were, there were some positives that came out about it. We heard that there were some sponsorship companies that, that s spoke to you about it. Talk to us about that. What kind of offers have you gotten, and um, are, are they lucrative offers? Okay, the the most lucrative offer I've got is someone messaged me and said, "Hey, we would love your pay because I didn't get my winnings. I was like returned back with half of what I, what I would have liked to have had." And so the most lucrative was, "Hey, I would like to buy whatever you paid, for, whatever kind of winnings you lost. I would let's, I would like to buy your shorts for that same amount to so hang them up." And, blah, blah, blah. and my man came up like. I, I was like, this is disgusting. There are some really disgusting oh, wow. people there. And so they had offered me $15,000 for my shorts. Um, was, was this a company or was this just like some some random person some on the internet? Cave, some man that wanted a man cave with my shorts. He has like a UFC like – I mean, they gave me his name, his email address, all of these things. I really don't want to uh, yeah, no, so much give too much details. But that has been the most lucrative offer and I'm not going to – uh, I mean, like, I, I don't, 
I mean, why? I mean, I was like, <laughs> people saying, send them over, just go do it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, well, I'll give them my information, but I don't see how this is going to, how this is actually real. Um, and then the other ones was uh, some, uh, some, some sort of wipes, whatever. Dude wipes. And Dude wipes, yeah, dude wipes, and then so we were talking about maybe doing like uh, having like fun with the idea, and I was like, you know what, this could be fun because, you know, a lot of people, I don't know the word, but a lot of people get, uh, I guess you say embarrassed, or you say like, you know, it's like going shopping for like adult diapers or something like that, but like, it can't get lower, I mean, it can, okay, I take that back, there are a lot more worse things happening to people than what happened to me, but as far as, far as like disease and like, poverty all those things There's a lot lot worse situations so um and it doesn't take a whole lot to like phase me so i was thinking you know what like if if i can help people like make you know make this kind of a project less embarrassing for people then why not i would uh i would run with it go with it i mean i'm not gonna go like like on a book tour or something about it but what i would do you know since it's you know still ongoing i thought this would die by now but since it's still ongoing, like, yeah, I would have some fun with it. Like, I mean, I could do some cool kicks and knees and adult diapers, I think. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like so the dude was maybe doing a commercial with it, putting some light to putting some light to the product, I guess you could say. So that's, those are just some, some things I'm brainstorming whenever the ideas came up. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be the image of this. It's, I've done <laughs> many different things, but then you know what? Like, this is such an intense sport. There's a lot of negativity in it, a lot more negativity than I would like. For me, it's just a sport. I mean, I, I love it, and it's, I love the competition. I love the thrill of it. I love the, the training of it. I, I mean, the training for it. I love the preparation. I love so much of it, but there's – I don't understand how these the subculture – the subculture, I have to say, is – Pretty unless unless I know people personally or things, it's, it's it's negative. Like I get a lot of messages saying, "Oh, I want you to kill her. I want you to rip her throat out." Things like that. I'm like, I'm never gonna. I would never destroy someone's career on purpose for them. Like I want I want a battle. I want cancer. I want you know. I want back and forth. Um, and I want someone that wants us just as bad as I do. Um, and but anyway, so like the, these opportunities, so I'm considering, yes, and it sounds weird when you put, when I saw it on paper, oh, Justine's considering, uh, Justine's considering um, uh, endorsing, not endorsing, um, uh, advertising for products, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that sounds really bad, weird on seeing it on like on a hard copy. Yeah. But when I, but when I feel it, like, I'm like, man, like, I would have total, I would have a lot of fun with it. Like, it doesn't take, I mean, I'm not doesn't take a whole lot to like for me to go run I mean I've 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 taken ideas and I've run with them and uh and the whole thing with the Twitter thing I really just initially wanted to say shit happens that was it but my team was I mean I just wanted to say just just say shit happens and I want to let me go and I just want to go clean myself they're like no like you are a warrior out there you don't you just don't I mean my coach was saying like my my corner was like Justin's not gonna tap then they knew I wasn't and because I know I just I refuse to give up like that and I'm like that with a lot of things um when I start something it's very very difficult for me just to tap out or anything tap out to anything and I don't mean in competition I meant to like in in life or anything like that, I just I hate giving up when I've already put my heart into it. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, would you guys do it? I mean, would you like go wrong well, with I, it? I, I think I think it's important. A, a great a great saying that was actually said by this uh, this guy who runs the WWE called Vince McMahon. He always says it's important to turn a negative into a positive, and I really think you, you've turned you know an interesting situation into a positive. So yeah, why not? I mean, why not? I think, especially in Australia and New Zealand, people love someone that doesn't take themselves too seriously and can sort of take the piss mm -hmm. out of themselves. And I think a lot of MMA fans are like that as well. So I think, you know, these commercials, I think they'd be hilarious. And I, I, I actually think people would just find them endearing. And I don't think anybody would take it negatively at all. And I'm just curious as well, Justine, because we saw the Dana White spoke to you and you might you might yeah. be getting a bonus for your efforts. What, what exactly did Dana White say to you? Did you guys have a conversation? Did he end up saying whether or not you're getting that bonus? I feel like uh, the one thing I'm I'm a little bit cautious about talking about this just because um, it is a personal thing. Like he did sure. personally call me, so I don't know how how okay Dana is okay. Sure. And how, but I've had three fights now with the UFC, and this is the first time 
I've I've gone and just, I mean in the past I've had discretionary bonuses, but um, this is the first time Dana White calling me post fight, and probably because he realized the situation what had happened, and so uh, in the middle uh, I get a call I I get a call from um, from a different number, and I'm like, I'm still like I'm sulking I'm still in like my sulking era, uh, era um, sulking like phase, and uh, so I'm, uh, so the phone's ringing I'm like hello. <laughs> He's like, hey, just seen. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Dana White, I'm like, hey, Dana. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to fire me. Or he's going to be like, hey, man, you can't do that. <laughs> but then he's like, I just want you to know you did it had an awesome effort out there. I don't, I mean, this is not quote word for word because I was, again, still very upset. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is the way I can remember now from it because I even messaged him back. I said, sorry, you kind of caught me off guard, by the way. And he's like, no, it's okay. But um, so he had said that you did a hell of a fight out there. Um, he was proud of my response on Twitter. Um, he said that it was a great way to own up, uh, something like it was a great way to own up to it. Um, and... Um, what else? I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to replay the conversation. Um, so hold on, he had said, "Hey, how are you doing?" And then he had said, "It was a great way to own up to it." And then um, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I hope this, you know, I hope this." Um, I was, I was like, I'm so, you know, like, oh, I was, I was like, oh, I need to get back in there, please. Like, can I just do it next weekend? I feel fine, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And he's like, just, just relax. And, uh, you know, just your effort, you know, it, said it, it, it might have owned you, earned you a, a bonus. And so I'm not going to pry. I'm not going to ask. I mean, it's okay. Cause I mean, I certainly, that was not the conversation I was expecting from Dana White. I thought he was going to just be like, can you like go to the bathroom or something before you do the fight or something? Mm-hmm. Although I didn't think it was going to go that way. So I'm not going to pry. I have no idea. I'm just going to be grateful for anything that comes up. And, uh, and we'll see. I will have to work for, I will have to work diligently for the next few weeks because I didn't get the mo- uh, the full money that I thought that I was going to earn. So, you know, this sport is, a, it's, a, it's you know, win with wins and losses. It's an unreliable income. It's, well, maybe because I'm so new as well, because I'm not, my purse isn't, you know, isn't the same as like superstar status or anything. So, um, I'm st- I still got to learn how to to balance it out and make things work for fight week, things like that. But for him to say things like that, it's just it's it's encouraging and it's positive. And as long as as long as long as I'm still competing, he's you know he is positive that. Um, I would compete again and then I would be soon I said please sooner than later like now is the time like now <laughs> um, that was that was the pace of the conversation and it really you know it, it, it picked me up as spirit I don't know how, how much how realistic a, a rematch would be she did win by unanimous decision so usually when that kind of happens the ball's in the court if they want to ever rematch me unless this is something like the fans push and push and shove into their face but um I don't know how realistic or she at least already said she didn't, didn't want to fight me at all. So um, I don't know how, I mean, I would love to fight her again next weekend, but I should have done everything I would have done last weekend. So, mm-hmm. Well, just curious, because, you know, if, if that Felice rematch doesn't pan out, is there anyone else in the division that you've set your eye on? You obviously, you know, you sound like this loss has sort of lit a fire under you and you're going to obviously like work extremely hard to come back even stronger. We have no doubt that you will. Anyone else in the division that you've sort of kept an eye on and say, you know what, that'd be a great fight? Oh, the champ. Oh, my God. Like, I mean, she loves to strike. She goes back and forth and strike. And, I mean, heck, when she goes on the ground, she wants to get right back up. Like, same thing with me. I want to get right back up and strike. Like, she doesn't want anything part, you know, she doesn't want, I mean, maybe this will change, obviously. Like, everyone evolves with the sport, or you should evolve with the sport. But, like, I mean, at the, at the pace, at the, the her, past, her past fights, she just wants to stay on her feet and strike. And I want the same thing. So, I mean, I think that would be excellent. Otherwise, if I keep on getting these wrestlers and – girls that just want to stay on top of me, just hold me down, they're going to be really, all of them are going to be very boring. But the, the other thing is, like, this is my third strawweight fight. This is my third fight in a row. I'm sorry, I have birds. and I have- <laughs> That's all right. They, they, they add to the experience. That's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, like, I don't know if, you know, 
I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was we talking about? Well, you, you were talking about Joanna and how that's kind of the dream fight for you, right? Yeah. Look at her. She doesn't want to be anywhere on the ground. She has an awesome she has an awesome takedown defense, gets right back up, right into striking. I'm not going to be like any of those girls that just walk into everything when she's on her heels. Like, I'm going to give her, like, you know, I, I really shouldn't say everything I'm going to do to her on the air, but all the things I really want to do, I can imagine it, and it's a beautiful matchup. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's like meant to be almost. So I hope she keeps on winning because I mean I, I know I probably threw myself further back for any chances of like a upcoming like title fight. So um, I hope she keeps on winning until I can get the opportunity because there are things that are that girls aren't doing in there and they just you know they, they pretty much want to hold her down. But they're you know she's doing great with her defense and the the things that she's supposed to do to keep her feet up and um, I mean to keep. To keep the fight on the feet the way she likes it, but if she wants someone to stand up with, I really want to be in there with her. So, um, and I know that's a huge jump going since you know my loss against Felice, but um, that'd be so great. I really just, I really, really want to get, go against a girl who wants to strike and wants to be right in front of me. And because there's so many beautiful takedowns and combinations, and ah. <laughs> we, we can we can hear the passion in your voice. I mean, hey, you know. Uh, destroy a division that you know even even in terms of felice a lot of people had sort of given up on her after Paige van zandt and now she's been looked at as a contender so things can absolutely turn around for you and i'm, I'm sure they will as far as yuana goes that's the thing about you you did muay thai for 10 years you know you've got an extensive career there you were the world muay thai council champion as well how much time have you sort of spent comparing your muay thai to yuana's and sort of playing that matchup in in your head obviously you know you'd have to get that title shot first but when you sort of compare your striking how do you how do you sort of see that <laughs> oh my gosh uh okay so man like people say i'm good at muay thai but i am actually really really bad at it because there's these little 12 year old kids in thailand that kick my ass oh, wow. i'm telling you these kids are just relentless and no one kicks my ass i mean no fight and no ufc fight has been up to the caliber like these that these little kids these like 12 13 14 year old kids some i mean yeah some of them are 16 they've had like 70 80 plus fights and they just oh my god like i i i i try to mimic i try to be as good as they are but man those kids like uh, they're incredible and so like no one like <laughs> and it's so weird when i hear the word undefeated like it's kind of like the loss now kind of like makes a little bit more sense now because people are like, oh, you're undefeated. And all I can think about is like, oh, man, I wish I really knew how much I get my butt kicked when I'm training in Thailand. I've gone there only maybe about, uh, like, maybe like seven or eight times or so. But my longest day, I was there for a year. The last day I was there, I was there for like three months maybe, around three months. And so I'm training in the morning and I'm, tra and I'm training in the evening, like sometimes three to four hours in the morning, three to four hours at night. Sometimes so it's like a six to eight hour training day. Not 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 very strict with those hours. Some days I'll some mornings like on Saturday I'll get like a two hour morning or something. Like depends on, you know, when you're doing six days a week. Sometimes they're a little bit nicer on the hours, but then they'll add the hours the next day. Um, so I I put a lot a lot of time into it, and that's why I, w I really wish I had like wrestled in high school or something. I wish I had you know equal time with my wrestling and my jiu jitsu with that because man like i'd be equal you know just to be equally comfortable with everything would be ideal you know but so that's why i'm working on it so so much and i didn't want to do too much against felice because that's you know that's our bread and butter these days mm -hmm. and so the things that are working with me i was just like mm. so but i just have to get that out of there like it kind of feels better now that i have this one loss i'm like okay that makes a little bit more sense now because like I get my butt kicked out there it's in, that's why I, I throw myself out there like training is so so tough it really makes every fight you know, and so in my training camp also in in here in Gaston in Gastonia North in Gastonia North Carolina, Gaston County I should say. I mean, and my training partners they kick my butt like they are, they're awesome. I'm tapping out all the time in training. Like they make they really make the fight. Like I, I, again, it's, it's, it seems I this is a poor word and I keep on using it, but it's just like it's kind of boring for me because it's not much movement and the excitement that I like. Um, so maybe I gotta, you know, kind of shift gears on, on on that end. I gotta find girls that just put that kind of pressure and that or that kind of cadence on me, as much as it annoys. Excuse me, as much as it annoys me. Um, so 
Yeah, this loss feels, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard and it's been a long time, but I've, I've had losses before and I like to keep on saying this because, but they just weren't, they weren't, they weren't sanctioned in big enough events for them to be put on paper or anything like that. I've had, I mean, I've had more than, more than what's actually on paper, but actually it's there, you know, it's a blur. I was competing every weekend at one, at one point when I was living in Thailand. So I'm there in the mornings and I mean, I go to training in the mornings and the, and then the evenings and in between so I can save my energy and I have good workout sessions i'll just go to the, um to like high school so that i don't i stay out of the sun i have you know i'm doing something i'm not just like you know twiddling my thumbs or something so um i like to try to practice the language with the with the natives with people that know me there um but i miss it i miss it a lot and i'm sorry am i boring you guys i don't know no 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 this is this is right we're Justin. soaking it all in okay so like whenever Ah oh, man, Muay Thai, it's beautiful. Like the 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 fans there. Like I mean, this is how this is how this is how isolated like the betting can be. Like I'm like in the corner, and so some random fan comes up. They're like, "Oh please, I bet big money on your on the el- on the spinning elbow in round three, okay? So take it easy. No nothing. Round two, round three, spinning elbow. Well, if I land that spinning elbow round three, and they found someone to bet against them with it, that mo- their money like they make big money. It can and, and the trainers. Oh my God, sometimes they're like, "Okay, we got to get two knees, and then you can do the sweep, okay? But no." <laughs> Knockout, no knockout. I'm like, okay, all right. And if I land, if I can, if I can do it on their call or on their cues and things like that, like they are so happy. And my training is going to be great the next day. Like, it, I mean, every trainer has a different little trick they want you to do. And all it takes, like, I mean, you can bet win or loss. Yeah, that's very basic. But they were betting, like, there were bets going on, like what kind of combinations I would land. And they didn't want me to finish anyone. They said round two, okay. Pretend you're slow, tired, you relax, you're at the mm-hmm. beach. Round three, only elbows. <laughs> they say, okay, round four, okay, then you can then you can do your kick, okay, kick. They say, wow. all, right, all right, got it. <laughs> but if, if for some reason I don't land it or I don't get like the call that they like, the next day, man, they will let me know. They're like, mm, you lazy, you don't want to do my <laughs> Go see the other trainer. I'm like, oh, oh no, no. But they will make. I mean, I get to see none of the money. It's not about the money out there. Like they're so happy when you make the money because that's everything for them. So it's like I'll go running in the neighborhood and they're like, oh, you want the big money? Blah blah blah. I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> So it's just, you know, like, oh, I want that. And then it's like, you know, it's so, so exciting. And there's fans that run into your corner and they're yelling at you in a tie. And then they really, and it's, I mean, when you, when you compete at one place, at one location, you build a rapport with these people and like they, they start to remember you. And they called me Shakira for the longest time. And I'm like, I'm not Shakira. <laughs> like it was just really, I love it there. And I miss it. It's been a few years since I've been back, but I mean, heck, if I'm going to be off or two, you know, I don't know how, I wish I could compete, like, again, I want to compete next weekend, but, you know, that's not realistic for UFC standards, for the for the roster, or or fair for the people that want to compete as well. So they have to go down the list and then the promotional road, blah, blah, blah. So it's time. It's a long, long time until I can compete again. So I really wish I could just hop over to Thailand and do some weird Thai fights while I'm out there. And then I know they're concerned about injuries and it's, a career now like it's you have to have to be a lot more careful with who i train with where i train like now that i'm in the ufc like there's a target on my back so girls or people just want to like prove themselves that they can like tap me out i mean heck i'll go to places and you know there sometimes i'll go to different places and i'll just let people hit me and just like go ahead and get their tap out so that they feel good about themselves because it's no loss to me it's okay like but man they People really, really feel good when they like finish someone, like when they finish a UFC person. So I let them have it. It's okay, no big deal. Um, but I really, really want that cadence, that competition, like that feeling again, you know. And I, I felt, oh my gosh, during that UFC, like when I turned it around and when Felice turned it around, and oh my god, the the crowd going crazy. It was almost up to that kind of. But then the clock runs out, so I'm like, dang it, I had horrible time management. So. <sighs> Absolutely, well, Ju- Justine. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing the stories that you gave us from Thailand, and it's also 
you know, a, a lot of people really impressed by your performance against Felice Herrig. A lot of toughness displayed, and people can't wait to see you get back in there. Um, Justine, just for the fans out there, I just want to remind everybody that they can follow you on Twitter and Instagram at Justine Keish. Make sure to do that. She's a fantastic fighter, and there's big things coming up next. Justine, thank you so much for coming onto the program. Again, we really appreciate you coming on the show and letting us know exactly um, what you were feeling and what was going through your mind and, and just where you're at now after the fight. We're excited to see what happens next for you. Oh, my God. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, it was awesome talking to you guys. I feel like I could talk to you guys for hours. But thanks again. I really appreciate it, and I hope I get to come back on sooner than later. 